everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to crochet the beautiful granny ripple stitch. This is a really fun stitch to do, and as you can see, it shows off colors beautifully. Uh, as a side note, this is the It's My Birthday Shawl. This is a free pattern on the Fiberflux site and a full video tutorial on the channel as well. You can also get the ad-free PDF in my shop. I'll put all the links down below for that. So once you're, you've learned the stitch, you can kind of jump in and grab a project for that as well. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using some bulky yarn and a K crochet hook. This is my Furls Odyssey in blue and some Bernat Home Deck in this peach color. So for our granny ripple swatch that we'll be making today, we're gonna to do a multiple of 54. So whatever you do, do 18 plus 18 plus 18 plus 18 and so forth until you get the width that you need for your project, okay? So we're gonna begin by, it's only two rows that we're gonna be learning. We're gonna do row one that kind of sets us up for the rest of the piece. And then row two that we'll learn is the row that you repeat over and over and over again for the rest of your project. So it's super easy. So what we wanna do first is put a slip knot on our hook. Wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up a loop and tighten. Then we're gonna do our starting chain. So our starting chain, like I mentioned before, is 54 chains, okay? We're just gonna kinda of make like a swatch, a granny ripple swatch. So to make a chain, wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, and 54, okay? So here is our starting chain. And again, you can scale this however you need to for your project. You can make this really wide to make a blanket, or you can uh, bring it down to make a shawl or even narrower for a scarf or something like that, okay? So let's start on row one. For row one, what we're gonna do is work three double crochets in the fifth chain from the hook. So this loop here does not count. So go one, two, three, four, and five. In that fifth chain from the hook, we're gonna work three double crochet. So to make a double crochet, wrap the yarn around the hook, insert the hook into that chain, bring up a loop. You'll have three loops on the hook. Wrap yarn around the hook, bring through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around the hook, bring it through the last two loops. Then do two more double crochets. So that's our second double crochet and our third double crochet. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna skip the next two chains. So one, two, and in the chain after that, we're gonna work three double crochets once again. So one double crochet, two double crochet, and three double crochet just like that, okay? Now, our granny ripple, what makes it a ripple is that it has peaks that spike up and it has valleys that dip down, okay? So we're gonna create our first peak now of our ripple. So what we wanna do for that is skip two chains once again and in the chain after that, we're gonna create our peak. So to do that, work three double crochets into that chain. One, two, and three, then we're gonna chain three. One, two, three, and then in that same chain, we're also gonna do three more double crochets. So one, two, and three. Just like that. And now you can see how we have you can kind of straighten it out a little bit, but you can see how we have a peak now. It goes up and then it's gonna come back down now. Okay, so after you've made your peak, then what we're gonna do is skip the next two chains, one, two, and in the chain after that, we're gonna work three double crochet. So one double crochet in that chain, two double crochet, and three double crochet, okay? Then we're gonna skip two chains once again, one, two, and in the chain after that, we're gonna do the same thing. Work three double crochet in that chain. One, two, and three, okay? Now we're ready to create our valley that dips down, okay? So to do that, what you have to do is skip five chains this time. One, two, three, four, five, and then what we're gonna do in the 
in the chain after that is work three double crochet. So skip five chains and work three double crochets in the chain after that. So one, two, and three. Okay, so you can see we now have a distinct peak and a distinct valley. Okay, so moving right along, we're going to skip the next two chains and then in the chain after that, work three double crochet. One, two, and three. Okay, so for the rest of row one, we're just gonna kind of repeat what we've been doing. So let's do that together. So what we're gonna do is skip the next two chains and in the chain after that, we're gonna create our next peak, okay? So in that chain, we're gonna work three double crochet, one, two, three, and then we're gonna chain three once again, one, two, three, and then work three double crochet in that same chain. One, two, and three. Okay, so you can see, and you might have to kind of sharpen up those points a little bit, but you can see we now have a peak and a valley and a peak, it's really shaping up. Okay, let's keep going. Skip the next two chains. In the chain after that, work three double crochet once again. One, two, and three. Okay, skip two chains, one, two, and in the chain after that, work three double crochet. One, two, and three. Now we're ready for our valley once again. So we're gonna skip five chains this time. One, two, three, four, five, and in the chain after that, work three double crochets into that chain. One, two, and three. All right, skip the next two chains, and in the chain after that, Work three double crochet. One, two, and three. Okay, so now we're ready to work our next peak. So once again, we're gonna skip two chains and in the chain after that, you're gonna work three double crochet. One, two, and three. And then we're gonna chain three. One, two, three. And then in that same chain, work three double crochet. One, two, and three. And we now have a peak once again. Then what we're gonna do is skip two chains, and in the chain after that, work three double crochet. One, two, and three. And then we just have a few chains left. So skip the next two chains and in the chain after that, work your last little cluster of the row. So three double crochet in that chain. One, two, and three. And then you'll have just one chain left. So that last chain, just work one double crochet to finish the row. Just like that, okay? So let's kind of lay this out because row one is complete and we can sort of see our handiwork. So what you'll want to do is I like to kind of straighten out my row, get those peaks and valleys kind of sharpened up and, and laid out and so you can see them. So we did a couple of multiples of this because I really wanted to kind of just show you, uh, you know, a few peaks and valleys. So we have a peak and a valley and a peak and a valley and a peak and then it goes back down, okay? Again, you can scale this with your multiples however you want. So let's move on to row two. Now, like I mentioned before, row two is the row that you'll be repeating for the rest of your project. So what we wanna do for row two is we're gonna chain four. One, two, three, 
four, and we're going to turn our work. Uh, we'll worry about these tails later. We don't need to deal with those right now. So what we need to do is we're going to start talking about these in terms of groups or clusters, these little groupings of these three double crochets that we made. They're kind of like in clumps all down our ripple, okay? So we're going to work three double crochets in that space in between these first two groupings or clusters, whatever you want to call them. So we have a grouping here, and then we have a grouping here. So here's the first grouping that we see. Here's the second grouping. That space right in the middle of those, we're going to work three double crochet. So one double crochet, two double crochet, and three double crochet. Just like that. Then we're going to do the same thing in the next space. So hop over, there's a, a grouping here and a grouping here. So in that space there, we'll work three double crochets in there. So one, two, and three double crochets. Okay? Now we're at a peak. Our peaks are kind of work the same. They're kind of going to kind of stack on top of one another. So go to that peak, that chain three space that we created in the last row. And we're going to work three double crochets right into that chain three space. So one, two, and three. Now, like I said, the peak has worked the same way. So go ahead and chain three. One, two, three. And in that same chain three space, work three double crochet. One, two, and three. Okay, so as you can see, our peaks are kind of stacked now, one on top of the other. Okay, let's head down to the valley now. So we're going to go in between the next two groupings and work three double crochet. One, two, and three. Hop over to the next two clusters here, and in that space there, work your three double crochet. One, two, and three. Okay, now we're at a valley. The valleys are really easy to do because we're just simply going to skip over it, and that will kind of bring it in to give that V shape that we need, okay? So we're going to hop over this cluster and our valley and the next cluster and go into that next space. So skip right over that valley, and in that space after that, work three double crochet. One, two, and three. And you can see how it sort of pulls it in and, and keeps that appearance of the valley going, okay? Now work three double crochet in between the next two clusters. So one, two, and three. Whoops, I dropped my loops. There we go, let's finish that third one, okay? Now we're at a peak again. So for our peak, we're gonna do the same thing, three double crochet, one, two, and three. Now we're gonna chain three. One, two, three, and work three double crochet in that same space. One, two, and three. Okay, so we now have another peak. All right, heading back down to the valley. We're going to go in between the next two clusters and work three double crochet. This is the point of our ripple. We're just kind of repeating, but it helps to practice. So when I make swatches, sometimes I like to kind of make them a little bit wider so I get more practice in. Okay, so three double crochet in that space. Hop to the next two clusters and right in between them, work three double crochet. One, get some more yarn here, two, and three. Okay, we're at a valley. So if you remember before when we did our valley, we skipped right on over it. So skip, there's a cluster, a valley, a cluster, skip over all that and go into the next space after that and work three double crochet. One, two, and three. Just like that. 
All right, work three double crochets in between those next two clusters. One, two, and three. And now we're at a peak. This is our last peak of our little practice swatch here. So we're at a peak, we're gonna do it the same way. Three double crochet, one, two, three, chain three. One, two, three, and three double crochet in the same chain three space, just like that. Okay, we just have a little bit more to go work three double crochet in between the next two clusters in that space. One, two, whoops, I dropped my loops again. There we go, and three. All right, and now we're here at the last two clusters, work three double crochets in between those last two clusters. Let's try that again. I keep dropping my loops. So three double crochet in that space, one, two, and three. Okay, now to finish off the row, we have this last little grouping here, this last little cluster, and then we have a turning chain. Remember in the last row we did a turning chain? So uh, at the topmost chain of that turning chain, you're just gonna work a double crochet in the top of that turning chain to finish the row, okay? So row two is complete. So let's once again, we're going to kind of lay this out like we did before. Again, you can kind of sharpen up those peaks and valleys, get them all nice and pretty. It also, um, aside from it, you know, looking nice to kind of straighten everything out, it also helps you see when you work the next row if you kind of straighten everything out. Okay, so here is our lovely ripple. We have a peak and a valley, peak and a valley, peak and valley, and so forth. Okay, so to keep working and keep going along, let me grab my other piece here. To keep moving along with your ripple, um, and let me just grab this one to show you a little bit more. Um, you're just gonna keep repeating row two over and over and over again until you can really see how this plays out with this project. But to keep going with your little swatch that we were making, just keep repeating row two over and over and over again until your piece is as tall as you would like it to be. Remember to get width, we work on our multiples. To get height, we repeat row two, okay? So that's it, that is how you make a granny ripple. It's such a beautiful stitch and so fun and easy to do. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again.